Hello everyone and welcome back to the CNS Pharmacology Masterclass where we discuss all the medications that work on the central nervous system. And here we will talk about the naloxone. Naloxone is a synthetic opioid that is used for treatment of opioid overdose. And here we will explain the definition, the pharmacokinetics, mechanism of action, therapeutic uses, and adverse effects of this medication. You can always skip to other parts of this video using the chapters available in the video description. And let's start with an overview of the naloxone. So the naloxone is a synthetic opioid antagonist medication. So it binds to the opioid receptors and antagonizes them. And it is famous for being used to counter the respiratory depression that occur with opioid overdose. So when the patient overdosed on opioids and had respiratory depression from that, we can use the naloxone to reverse that. Thus, it is life-saving medication. It was synthesized in 1961 by the pharmaceutical researchers Moses Lonstein and Jack Fishman. Now here, let's explain where the naloxone sits in relation with other opioids. So regarding opioids, we have the natural, we have the semi-synthetic and the synthetic opioids. Uh, both the natural and the semi-synthetic act as agonists on the opioid receptors. Examples for the natural is the morphine and the codeine, and for the semi-synthetic is the heroin and hydromorphone. And then the synthetic, we have the agonists like the methadone and meperidine, and we have the mixed agonist antagonists like the nalorphine and nalbufine, and then we have the synthetic antagonist opioids, which are the naloxone and the naltrexone. So the naloxone is included in the antagonist synthetic opioids. Now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of the naloxone. So naloxone is mostly available as intravenous formula with a short duration of action of about one to two hours. It is also available as intramuscular subcutaneous and intranasal. The oral formula is not used because of the extensive first pass metabolism associated with that, and the bioavailability of the oral formula is 2%, which is very low. And the bioavailability of the intranasal formula is 50%, and the intravenous and intramuscular is of course 100%. It is metabolized by conjugation in the liver, and the half-life is from 30 to 80 minutes of the intravenous formula and it is excreted through the liver and kidney. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the naloxone. So it binds to the opioid receptors, the mu, the delta and kappa, and act as a competitive antagonist on these receptors. So it antagonizes these receptors and it has 10 times higher the affinity for the mu receptors. So it favors the mu receptors more than the kappa and delta. And that is why it is very good in reversing the respiratory depression associated with the morphine and the other opioid agonists. Because the morphine favors the mu receptors and the naloxone also favors mu receptors. So when naloxone is given in morphine toxicity, it is very good because it antagonizes the mu receptors. Administration of naloxone in patients not taking opioids would not produce any effect. But if the patient is opioid dependent, then antagonizing their opioid receptors with naloxone would reverse the effect of the agonist. The effect of the morphine, for example, leading to withdrawal syndrome. So when the action of the morphine reversed, uh, there would be some effects, there would be some symptoms uh, because of that, and those we call them with a withdrawal syndrome, and this will be explained more in the adverse effects chapter of this video. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses 
of the naloxone. So it is used for opioid overdose, as we mentioned. It is given intravenously because the intravenous formula is the fastest one. It works after one to two minutes. And it is used for full agonist opioid overdose, like the morphine. And the opioid overdose symptoms like the respiratory depression, the decreased level of consciousness, the decreased awareness of pain, the cardiac arrest maybe, and other effects of opioid overdose are reversed within one to two minutes after intravenous naloxone administration. And the effect lasts for one to two hours duration. And patients who are treated with naloxone intravenously may go back to respiratory depression after the duration of action of naloxone is over. So it has to be administered multiple times until the drug that caused overdose duration ends. Because remember, most of the opioid agonists have a longer duration of action than the naloxone. For example, the morphine uh, has a duration of action of about 4 hours and the naloxone has a duration of action of about uh, one and a half hours, let's say two hours. Uh, so if we give naloxone, when the patient is on morphine overdose, the naloxone will work for two hours and then the morphine would go back to the receptors and occupy them back and it would lead to the patient is back to respiratory depression. So that is when you have to administer naloxone again to the patient to save their lives. Now let's talk about the details of treatment of the opioid overdose. So when the patient uh, gets respiratory depression or life-threatening respiratory depression and CNS depression from opioid overdose, we start by giving them naloxone with a dose of 0.1 to 0.4 milligrams intravenously. That is of course with the rescue of breaths uh, and calling the emergency department. So, uh, now the maintenance is with the same drug, is also with naloxone, and the dose is 0.4 to 0.8 milligrams. It is repeated whenever the patient is back to being abnic. You give them naloxone again, and in opioid overdose of the newborn, you start with a naloxone dose of 5 to 10 micrograms per kilograms, and the second dose is about the same. So if the patient is a newborn, you give them first 5 to 10 uh, micrograms per kilograms, and then you repeat the dose if needed. Uh, so this is the naloxone emergency kit. It looks like that. They give you three syringes. They give you alcohol preps and the naloxone. And here we have uh, some instructions on how to use them. Uh, so this is an example of a naloxone syringe that is already loaded. So if the patient needed this uh, injection, it is already loaded and they only have to inject it and it is usually trained and the family members are trained to do that for the patient if they would go into respiratory depression. So naloxone should be prescribed to patients taking high dose of opioids, uh, higher than 100 milligrams of morphine, just in case they go into respiratory depression you give them the naloxone. And there should be, of course, a form of education that includes preventing, identifying, and responding to opioid overdose. The family members should be educated and should be taught to give rescue breathings until the emergency service reaches them. Now, naloxone is also used for uh, treatment of adverse effects or associated with intravenous or epidural opioids but the, the dose is low dose of about 0.04 milligrams. And it is also used in treatment of clonidine overdose. Clonidine is antihypertensive medication. So when the patient overdose on this medication, we use the naloxone as one line of treatment for this overdose. Naloxone is also combined with the puborinorphine and bentazacine to prevent recreational opioid use of these medications because it is poorly absorbed orally and that is why it is given orally so only puborinorphine or bentazacine are absorbed. 
So it is given for the patients who want to quit opioids. So they give them buprenorphine plus naloxone. So they would manage their withdrawal symptoms with the buprenorphine and the naloxone is not absorbed orally. Uh, but if they are try to abuse this by by taking the mix and putting it in, in a intravenous formula, this would not work because the naloxone would be absorbed there and it would block the receptors and it would cause severe withdrawal symptoms. This is the famous trade name for that is the Suboxone. So it's a buprenorphine plus naloxone sublingual film. It is given orally to the patients. Finally, let's talk about the adverse effects of the naloxone. So there is no tolerance, no physical dependence, and no addiction associated with opioid antagonists. So the tolerance, the physical dependence, and the addiction is available in all opioids except the opioid antagonists. They don't come with those. And the main adverse effect of naloxone is withdrawal syndrome. It's a number of symptoms that arise after sudden withdrawal or dose reduction of opioids and that are consumed by an opioid physically dependent person. Administration of naloxone equals opioid withdrawal, but it is more severe because it occurs in minutes. Uh, so what are exactly the withdrawal symptoms? Well, they are drug craving, anxiety, restlessness, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, sweating, rhinorrhea, lacrimation, hyperventilation, muscle aches, tachycardia, and hostility. So those symptoms would occur after giving the naloxone to opioid dependent person. And also another side effects of naloxone is the hypotension, pulmonary edema, and arrhythmias in patients with heart disease. So if your patient have a heart disease and you give them naloxone, you need to monitor for those, for the hypertension, palm edema, and arrhythmias. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe. And if you want to support more, you can by subscribing to the Patreon, link provided in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and peace.